G'day, welcome to another Wimbledon Channel video on history skills. Today we're going to be looking at centuries. This is a topic that can be really confusing for some junior historians. We hear questions like, when do centuries begin? And is the 400s the 4th century or the 5th? This is so confusing, the public had a debate about when the millennium ended and when it began back in the year 2000. Yeah, you heard that right, actual adults arguing about when to have a party. So let's sort this out once and for all. Let's backtrack. We use something called the Gregorian calendar. This sets up a marker, the birth of Christ, as the middle point of the calendar, with every year before it being counted as years before that happened, and every year after it, years since. Therefore the calendar is split up into two terms, before Christ, BC, and AD, that's Latin for Anna Domini, which means in the year of our Lord. These days, just to confuse people, we have common era years, so before common era instead of BC, and common era instead of AD. That's the easy part. This is where people get confused. They think there's a year zero. But guess what? There isn't. There is no year zero. In other words, the year before Jesus was born was 1 BC, and the year after he was born was 1 AD. Therefore, if a century is a hundred years, then every century actually starts at 01, not 00. So 1st century AD starts 01 AD to 100 AD. In other words, the first year is always 01 and the last year is always a double zero. Remember that one rule and you will not be confused. For example, 1601 to 1700, 17th century, 1701 to 1800, 18th century, 1801 to 1900, the 19th century. A helpful rule I use with my students is, the only year which shares the same date as the century is the last one. So that's Centuries from Wimbledon Channel. Any questions, please comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.